Hey everybody, this is John from Slash Bash, and today I am bringing you another Malicious Compliance Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, then subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on the fun. In our first story, when your department has one computer that has all the software to speed up your work and keep things running smoothly, that is obviously the machine that needs to be shut down. Let's jump right in. I worked for a large consumer electronics retailer for many years as technical support. I was also in charge of all of the internal devices and computers employees used at my location. Not the computers that were on demo for customers to use, which comes into play later. The retail stores offer technical support for computers and mobile devices. Now for technical support, there were two laptops that I was authorized to configure for use by technicians, load useful software and allow admin privileges. One such useful tool is called RecBoot. This application was freeware, I checked the license, and not an internal tool. Back in the days when iDevices had a physical home button, to put the device in recovery mode, the home and power button would need to be pressed. RecBoot allowed a connected device to be put in recovery mode by clicking the recovery mode button easy and simple. A lot of devices had this home button stop working. When you were able to access the device, assistive touch could be used for a virtual home button. If the device passcode was forgotten or too many attempts were made and the device was permanently locked, a restore was needed. To do this, the device must be put in recovery mode, which is also important for later. Only two laptops, when sometimes dozens of customers were looking for support and needing to restore iDevices or reset account passwords, it was not great. Obviously, customers would get impatient having to wait longer for support. This was brought up to management. Their solution? Well, there are tons of demo computers, connect the devices and do restores from them. There you go, Bob's your uncle. These demo computers were loaded with a demo image and configured so that any changes made would be reverted when the computer was restarted. Also, the admin password was a guarded secret. I had the password but was definitely not allowed to share it. To run RecBoot after it had been downloaded from the internet required the admin password, so it only worked for restores. So to do a restore, each demo computer would have to download the restore image, which was many gigabytes of download, and it would take over 20 minutes just to download one, not even complete a restore. Each device model would need a specific restore image. You can imagine this was not ideal, but to management, hey, it works, problem solved. What I started doing was I would unfreeze a few computers, transfer all of the needed restore images onto them from a local server, and freeze them again. I would also transfer RecBoot, launch it, enter the admin password so it wouldn't require it again later. This server was on the public network and therefore was not managed by the remote IT team as an internal computer and had no corporate policies installed. There was no confidential information on it. I had passed this by the appropriate channels and was given some guidelines to follow. If all was followed, I was allowed to have the server running. Everyone seemed to think it was a great idea and it really helped. It was a lot of upkeep. Every time a new software update was released, I would have to unfreeze, transfer and then refreeze the computers. If a new demo image was installed on the computers, I would have to redo it as well. It would take a few hours to get done, but I was happy to do it. It saved a lot of time in the end and we were able to offer better service to our customers. Well. The person in charge of the demo computers did not like it. Apparently, corporate didn't either. I was told I could not modify the demo computers in any way. Still, I came up with a solution. With the server already running, I would share the logins with the technical support team. I could grant admin access on the server, they could run the tools needed, more specifically RecBoot, and should a restore image be needed, they could transfer it locally over the network to the demo computer they were using much faster. All was well until we got a new lead technician, Jeb. Now unlike other stories, Jeb was not an external hire, but a technician who had been promoted. We had worked together for a few years at this point, and he was actually a decent guy. 
I'm not sure if the power went to his head. He just wanted to impress upper management or if he was being pressured by management, but after being promoted, he became a different person. Suddenly, he was the boss and things were done his way and that was that. During a physical inventory of the store, it was noted that my server was not a managed internal server, nor was it a demo unit for customers. As such, it needed to be decommissioned and the hardware returned to the warehouse. Jeb brings this to my attention as I am the one who takes care of internal devices. He asks that I make it gone by the end of the next day. I pointed out that I had followed the guidelines and that he knew full well just how useful this was. I brought up that it would impact his metrics on customer wait time and satisfaction, something I'm sure he was hoping to improve. He wouldn't have it. He cited that any computer on the network needed to be managed and my server was no longer approved. He also let me know that the two laptops that were being used by the technicians were going to have an image installed on them and now be managed units. I tried to argue, at least for my server, and he threatened to write me up. All right, I'll let you dig your own grave. He also sent out an email to the whole technical support team pretty much forbidding the use of any non-approved software. I wiped my server and sent it back to the warehouse. Without my server and now the two laptops being managed, no one had an admin password, except me and the IT team who was remote, and tickets were usually only responded to in 24 to 48 hours. But being managed, no unapproved software could be installed anyway. Cue the next night, first day without the server, when I get a call from Jeb in a panic, asking how he could get Recboot working. He really needed it. I had the pleasure of telling him that the server was gone and no unapproved software could be installed. As per company policy, the admin password could not be provided unless a ticket was opened with IT and his need for it was approved, which was likely to take a few days if it was even approved. Turns out a customer started throwing a fit. Not only one, but multiple people over the course of the day and each time it was escalated to him to deal with. Each time having my server would have put a swift end to the problem. This particular customer had an iPhone that was about a year and a half old, only one year of warranty, and the home button stopped working. They had been in previously and were given the options of the virtual home button, free, paying for a replacement phone, a few hundred dollars, or buying a brand new phone. Repairing the home button was not a repair we offered. They had opted for the free option. This time, the customer's kid had played with the phone, entered the passcode wrong, and the phone was disabled. Of course, the customer doesn't have iCloud set up or a recent backup, so no remote wipe and no way of backing up the info. To top it off, they would have to spend hundreds of dollars for a replacement phone or buy a brand new one. Having had the phone less than two years, their phone contract was not up for renewal with their cell phone provider. Needless to say, the customer was pissed. After that day, customer satisfaction and wait times tanked. He had to deal with a lot more escalations. He definitely was not looking good in the eyes of management. After a few months, he was demoted back to technician. Now, this would have been the perfect time for me to advocate to bring my solutions back, but I didn't do it because I left the company shortly after. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then please hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.